O'Connor's Irish Pub is a Springfield favorite for great food and spirits. Located just off of Home Road at 2336 Northmore Drive in Springfield, O'Connor's has a full dinner menu ranging from pizza to steak to hamburgers. Stop in for their daily happy hour specials and watch the game on one of their big screen TVs. And if the cold weather's got you down, you can stay outside at O'Connor's all fall and winter long in its heated patio. O'Connor's Irish Pub at 2336 Northmore Drive off of Home Road in Springfield. Welcome out to Springfield High School. I'm Bryant Billing alongside the coach, Casey Madison. We are here for another installment of our new one, our two-on-one interview series here on the Top Billing Sports Network on topbillingsports.com. And we are joined today with new Springfield Athletic Director, Mike Delapina. Mike, thank you for joining us. Thanks, Brian. And uh, welcome back to Springfield here as well. Thanks. Coming home. I, a lot of fun to be back home. I'm sure thing. You're a former South athlete, as well as uh, have a good family name down there with your father who was a coach for years, your brother, Dan Delapina, who we saw here earlier today. Just what's it been like so far making the adjustment back home here to Springfield? It's uh, It's been great. It's a lot of fun to be back home. Um, I think uh, a lot of things have changed in the community. Um, my family does have a long reputation and uh, history here with Springfield. Um, in addition to my brother Dan, who teaches in this building and has coached here and currently coaches out at Tecumseh, my brother Tim uh, taught at, at South for a number of years and coached at South and uh, then went out to Shawnee. He's currently in the Hilliard schools. Um, my brothers and my sister graduated from uh, South High School. We were all athletes here. My mother taught at North High School. My dad taught and coached at South High School and uh, attended Wittenberg. So, you know, Springfield is very dear to me personally and uh, has been a big part of helping me to develop as a, as a person and, and it was especially a big part of my athletic career. And uh, I've always had a, a big fondness for Springfield sports and uh, I'm excited to be back and be a part of it. Now, the long time tenure you've had being an athletic director so far, including Hamilton, where you've come from, what have you learned there, especially being in a school district that's similar to Springfield, sitting a lot of ways, similar size as well, that you're thinking of bringing here into Springfield? I think the biggest thing, especially in, you know, in Hamilton, there was great community support, great tradition and appreciation for the tradition, uh, the excellence that they've had and some tremendous athletes that have come through the program. Um, I think that, that sports, scholastic sports in particular, can just be such a big part of a community fabric. And uh, that's really what I want to, uh, to help to bring back here to Springfield. You know, Springfield has such a great sports history and I don't feel that, you know, people have really started to appreciate or get behind Springfield high school sports. You know, um, people are still, you know, remembering their days of, of, at North High School and South High School, but this is the future and, and the kids now, you know, deserve the same kind of uh, support and experience that, that the adults had when they were at North or South. And so I really hope that the community gets behind our kids and gets behind our programs and comes out and supports their efforts, regardless of, of what sport we're out there promoting. Um, any kid that participates for their school and represents the school and the community uh, is an important um, ambassador for our school and community. So that's really what we want to try to do is just promote our programs and, and get people on board with what we're trying to do. Mike, give us a sense of what it's like your first couple of days on a, on a new job, like an athletic director position at a new school. Give us an idea of what it's like and who you, who you meet with and uh, what kind of things you have to get going. <laughs> I think the first thing, Casey's figuring out which keys open up what doors. <laughs> um, sifting through uh, the numerous emails that have stack, uh, stacked up, uh, reconnecting with a lot of people. It's been, uh, you know, every day somebody comes in that, that I've either known uh, or knew years ago. And, and so there's been a lot of that. Um, but at the same time, it's just kind of getting to know the coaches, getting to know the kids. That's the most important thing for me is starting to build those kind of relationships with our coaching staff, with our kids, and, and getting to reacquaint myself with the community. Operationally, things don't change very much from place to place. You still have your specific game day operations and the nuts and bolts of things that you do in a job every day. We have a new campus director here at Springfield High 
uh, Mr. John Keenly. So he is starting a new big job as well, and the two of us will work very closely um, to kind of assess where we're at as a program and the direction that we want to go. Um, I think uh, our coaches and our kids have been working very hard all summer and are looking forward to competing uh, during the fall sports season. So uh, I'm very fortunate that I have uh, a very experienced individual in Greg Newland in yeah. the department to assist. Uh, our athletic secretary, Kay Banyan, has been on the job um, for a while, and so she knows what's going on. So they're huge um, uh, benefits for me to, to have their experience on hand to allow me to kind of take the time to acclimate to a new position and um, and start to get my feet wet and, and really not be overwhelmed at once because I know that so many things are, are being taken care of and we're taken care of it. And Mark Stoll is still a great resource. Uh, he's still in the league. Now as the new athletic director down at Xenia High School. So I feel really lucky um, to have people that I've known for a while that I can tap into and ask questions of. Um, again, it's, uh, you know, for me, it, it's really just getting to know a lot of new uh, people, procedures, policies, and so forth. Um, and I'm excited to get started. It's, uh, it's been a whirlwind <laughs> thus far. I've been coming up since uh, late July, just trying to, to get myself acclimated and, and just learning things. And uh, it's kind of walking around and, and taking a look. Um, I've been in the gym once before prior to starting uh, when Hamilton played Springfield. Um, but before that, I, I hadn't seen the school. I hadn't seen anything. So, you know, it's been fun for me just to kind of go around the town and look at all the positive changes that have taken place. As far as philosophies, uh, have you brought anything new, any, any different expectations or philosophies into this program that it had, didn't have before? You know, I don't know if my expectations and philosophies are any different than uh, you know the, my predecessors. Um, I think the expectations of, of mine, of our coaches and our kids, are the expectations that our Board of Education and our superintendent and our building administration have. You know, I want our coaches to be very professional. I want them to provide an outstanding experience for our students in athletics, regardless of whether they're winning or losing. You know, I want them to be outstanding teachers of the game, and I want them to be outstanding teachers of what's expected of a person uh, participating uh, for uh, our athletic programs. I, I want them to be teachers of life skills. Um, at the same time, I want our students to represent uh, Springfield in a very positive manner and go out and compete with honor and compete with dignity and, and uh, you know, represent the school and community and be some, you know, uh, something that we can be very proud of. And uh, I know that they do a great job of that. So um, for me, it's not about so much changing anything as much as it is looking at things, refining some things, and maybe making adjustments that will help us down the road. And that's a team, that's a team concept. Uh, that's something that will you know, take input from our board, from our superintendent, from our building principal. Um, and, and look at our coaches and kids and really be responsive to what the kids want to see from their athletic program. So do you set up, do you set up like individual meeting times with your head coaches? I, I do. We have, a, uh, uh, we have had a preseason coaches meeting already and I've been meeting with coaches individually and, and, and some of them that are still yet to come. Um, my, I've always tried to hold monthly coaches meetings um, just to try to get us all on the same page let everybody know, you know, what's going on with their program. We share so many athletes in a school this size. Uh, so I think that, you know, it's important that there's some common philosophy in, in what uh, our coaches are doing and what our expectations are of our, are of our students. And uh, I want people to, to realize that, you know, just because you coach one sport and you coach another, you're, you're still part of the same team. And so we're trying to do things cooperatively. You've had an item that's actually been in the news here recently. Springfield City's not going to have pay-to-play fees anymore, but the district is running into surplus currently, and when you've got some districts um, here locally, like Tecumseh and Wayne, who are struggling, Wayne, a school district that was initially charging $750 per sport, that's dialed back a bit. For having a school your size not having to charge pay-to-play is a really big thing. Uh, I think that that's a great thing for the for the people of uh, Springfield. It's really, uh, I think, going to have positive um, uh, repercussions down the road. Uh, I hope. Um, it's hard to tell at this point how it will impact participation, 
But, uh, you know, things are tough all over. It's a tough economy right now. So, um, And it costs a lot for kids to be involved in sports. I know as a parent of four <laughs> sons and that are all involved in multiple activities, um, it, it costs a lot of money. And so taking down one less obstacle for some kid to participate is a great thing. And uh, I think it, it speaks very highly of our administration um, and our, uh, our, our treasurer's office just how we've been able to manage uh, our, our accounting and our finances. Um, because it is strange in this day and age to have a school that is not assessing a participation fee. Uh, we are very, uh, very much probably uh, in the elite <laughs> of, of that group because I know that it's, it's become a necessary evil uh, across uh, you know, the state that you have to assess a fee to help your programs operate because it does cost money to provide a good uh, athletic experience for kids. Speaking of money, one thing that costs a lot of money is a, a turf football field. <laughs> and talking to a lot of football fans around the area, that's one thing that Springfield High and Evan Stadium has stuck out at. It's, it's now for the last couple of years been the only stadium that hasn't had turf and a lot of the bigger G-Walk schools have gotten that. And that's the thing a lot of fans are wondering, is that going to be down the road for Evan Stadium even if it's five or ten years down the road? You know, I can never speak to what's going to happen in the future. I, I didn't uh, unpack my crystal ball yet. Um, but, you know, we're very uh, proud of our facilities. We have a great uh, maintenance crew that does a, a, a great job trying to keep up with all of the field maintenance that yep. we have around the district. And uh, Evan Stadium is an outstanding facility, has been the home of uh, the, the South Wildcats and the home of the Springfield Wildcats, and it will continue to be so at this time. And uh, it's a great place to play. I'm, I'm very much a purist. You know, there's yeah. nothing that is better <laughs> to me than a, than a well-maintained and manicured grass field. And uh, I guess I'm kind of old school in that regard. You know, it certainly saves money on the laundry if you play on artificial turf. That's um, true. <laughs> but, uh, but at the same time, I think there's something about being out there in the fresh cut grass and, and uh, being out there um, on, a, on a natural surface that uh, it can't be replicated. And so, um, at this time, we do not have plans for anything down the road. And uh, opponents of uh, the Wildcats, when you come to Springfield High, you better be ready to put on the long boots and play on the grass. Do you have any concerns as far as attendance? You know, everybody's always looking to raise attendance. Any ideas about some things you could probably do to, to raise that in some of the major sports? Well, I think, you know, everybody jumps on the bandwagon when you're winning. So, yeah, that's you know, true. Um, and that's something that we work very hard at trying to do is, is just get a little better each year and, and every day in practice and, uh, and, and get some W's. Um, it, but there's also so many things for, for people to do now. I still think that scholastic sports are the best bargain going. You know, if you want entertainment, if you want, if you want drama, if you want, you know, outstanding competition, pay your $7 and come watch a high school athletic event because uh, it is sports at its purest form. You know, these aren't kids getting paid. Um, these are the future stars of tomorrow, and who knows, someday you might see a kid that's gonna be, you know, playing on TV. And uh, I think that we have a great product, and I hope that the people of Springfield come out and, and support our kids, because they work very hard and they represent Springfield in a great way. Speaking of some of those great athletes, you've got a couple right now here in the high school, particularly with Coach Gillespie and the football team. Have Devontae James, Thaddeus Snodgrass, Snodgrass going to UK. James just recently announced he's going to go to West Virginia. And you've had a great athlete in Trey DePriest who was walking these hallways just a couple of years ago. What have you heard about the student athletes that you have here at Springfield High School so far? And you've, have you had a chance to meet with any of them? I've met with uh, several of them and have had the opportunity to, uh, to see many of them play in the last couple of years as, as uh, you know, my previous school, Hamilton, and, uh, and Springfield squared off in football and in basketball over the last few years. And, uh, you know, there's one thing that you can always uh, depend on, and that's that Springfield is going to field strong teams and have outstanding students, um, you know, every single year. And, and so college recruiters know the kind of uh, quality athlete that comes uh, from Springfield. So we've been very fortunate. We're very fortunate that these two young men have signed now. We have several others that still have the potential um, and could have yeah. some scholarship opportunities coming their way. So uh, I think it, it speaks a lot, not just for our community and for our programs, but more importantly, about the quality of the families and the quality of the individuals that are attending the Springfield schools. 
and uh, I think it's a great thing for our kids. It certainly speaks well of our programs. Uh, it obviously is a, a huge honor and benefit for these young men who have gotten this opportunity. Um, they have put themselves in a position to be recruited and, and to be able to earn a scholarship. So, you know, that says a lot because not every kid gets that opportunity, and there's a lot of great athletes playing high school sports around the country. So uh, we're very proud of these, these guys and uh, hope that there's going to be more coming down the road. Scheduling-wise, a big thing that was added by Stoll before he left and uh, the previous administration was a, an upcoming football game. It's going to be next year. The Wildcats are going to take on Shawnee in a non-conference game. That's an addition a lot of people around here like from that aspect of having a local rivalry. Looking across all sports, what's your uh, scheduling philosophy? Um, there's a lot of Springfield people that have said maybe we ought to go over to Columbus, play some more uh, Ohio Capital Conference schools and some of that. I know the GWAC Conference, as a matter of fact, is working on a <laughs> basketball tournament right now with that. What's your view on scheduling? I, I think, obviously, you know, you want to consult with your coaches and try to find the best opponents that match up with you, uh, you know, on a variety of different levels, uh, from a competitive standpoint, from a school size uh, standpoint. Um, but you know you want to give uh, your your students an opportunity to be successful, and so I consult with my coaches when when it comes to scheduling and decide who do we want to play, who do we want to add, who do we want to potentially drop. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you, you want to try to schedule uh, teams that are going to help prepare you for the tournaments and and teams that you're going to face during the course of your regular season schedule. So it makes a lot of sense to play teams that are of a similar size. But at the same time, I see uh, a lot of benefit of playing schools with a local flavor as well because it certainly uh, can lend a lot from a community standpoint. So, um, you know, we will at the end of each season sit down with our coaching staff uh, and assess where we're at, who we played, how things went, and the direction that we want to go for the following year. All right. Well, so I'm excited about the Shawnee, the Shawnee <laughs> I'm matchup. Sure. You know, I think it, that's, a, that's a very cool thing. Coach Meeks has done a great job out there, a great program. And, uh, you know, the Wildcats are doing good things, too, so it should be a great matchup next couple of years. It absolutely should be. Mike, we thank you for joining us here. Thanks, our, Brian. I our, appreciate it. Absolutely. On our two-on-one video interview series here on the Top Billing Sports Network, we're going to broadcast six Springfield High football games this year. We're going to have some volleyball coverage of the Wildcats, and we'll have a lot of coverage of the Wildcats on the basketball floor coming up this winter. And, next spring as well. So we'll be seeing you a lot, Mike, and we look forward to it. Likewise. We want everybody to be invited to, to come <laughs> out and support the Wildcats and support high school sports in the Springfield area. Thank you for watching this two-on-one video interview series here on the Top Milling Sports Network. As the lights are out, and I think it's a pretty good time, it's time for us to go. We will see you next time here on TopMillingSports.com.